Hello and welcome to the OpenMX video tutorial series. In this video we will be discussing latent growth curve analysis. Latent growth curve analysis is a form of longitudinal data analysis. Longitudinal data analysis is usually data for which we have multiple subjects measured at multiple time points, but we only have one, or at least a very few, variables of interest. The goal of a latent growth curve is to understand intra-individual change over time and inter-individual differences in intra-individual change over time. This is a plot of what typical growth curve data looks like. Each line represents one subject, and each subject is measured at a total of five time points. In this case, time point zero refers to the first time point of measurement. Our goal in a latent growth curve analysis is to describe the growth patterns of this data and how variable those growth patterns are. One way to describe this data is with a line. This line has an intercept of 10 and a slope of 2, and it seems to fairly accurately describe our data. But there is also variation around that line which we would like to capture. A latent growth curve can be used to measure all of these parameters. On the left you see a general equation for a latent growth curve. On the right you see the associated path diagram. I, or the latent intercept, is held constant across all of our measured variables. The loadings for this latent variable are all fixed to 1. This creates a constant intercept value for all variables in the model. The loadings of the second latent variable, s, are all fixed to have a linear relationship to one another. This creates a measurement of a latent linear slope value. Here is the path diagram in relation to the data. The mean of the latent intercept term is the intercept for a line of best fit to our data. The variance of the latent intercept term is a measure of individual differences at the initial time of measurement. The larger this number, the more variation we have about our estimated trend line. The mean of the latent slope variable gives us an estimate of the average slope for all of our data points across all of our time points. The variance of the latent slope term gives us an estimate of how variable the individual slopes are around the average slope. The covariance between these two latent variables gives us an estimate of how related the intercept and slope are. For positive covariance, high intercepts also have high slopes. For negative covariance, high intercepts tend to have lower slopes. Now let's create this model in OpenMX. First, we load OpenMX with the library function, and then we read in and inspect our data. As you can see, we have one variable measured at five time points. Next, we specify the names of our manifest variables and latent variables. You will notice that the latent variables here are i and s for the latent intercept and latent slope values. Now we can create our model. This data was generated with a true intercept of 10 and a slope of 2. Let's see if our model can recover those parameters. We will store this model into an object called MyModel1. The name of this model will be LGC, and it will be a RAM-type model. Our manifest vars are our manifest variables, and our latent vars are our latent variables. The first path argument creates all of the single-headed arrows from our intercept term to our manifest variables. You will notice that the values in this path are fixed by setting free equal to false, and all values are equal to 1. The next MX path statement creates all of the single-headed arrows from our latent slope value to our manifest variables. Notice that we fix all of these values by setting free equal to false, and setting the values argument to 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is a linear trend. Next, we create paths for the variance of our latent variables. To do this, we set paths from the latent variables to themselves and set arrows equal to true. These values are both free, and we are going to start with values of 0.8 and 0.8 in order to estimate these parameters. Next, we create the covariance between the intercept and the slope term. We set this value to be free and start with an estimate of 0.6. Next, we model the error variances of our manifest variables, and then our means paths. Notice that unlike in a regular structural equation model, we only have means paths going to our latent variables. We end the model with an MX data statement, and then run the model and look at a summary. It appears that our model ran without any issues. 
The first few estimated parameters are the measurement errors of our observed variables. Next we have measured the variance of our intercept term, the covariance between our intercept and slope, and the variance of our slope. Our covariance is positive, indicating that the intercept and slope are related in such a way that the higher intercept terms lead to higher slopes. Next are the variables for which most researchers would be interested in, the mean intercept and mean slope term. It seems that our model did a very good job about picking up the true intercept and slope in this data. To test the parameters of this model, we engage in model comparison. Most researchers would be interested to know if the slope of this model is zero or not. To do this, we create a new model, MyModel2, and the first argument of that new MX model is our original model, MyModel1. This new test will be called slope test, and we will override the MX path from the intercept term to the slope by setting this value to be fixed at zero. We will also test the hypothesis that the covariance is significant in the same manner. We will fix the two-headed arrow between the intercept and slope latent variables to be zero and create a new model. We will then run these models and then use the mxcompare function to compare these models against our original model. Based on the p-values of these likelihood ratio tests, it appears that both the slope and the covariance between the intercept and the slope are significant in this model. Thanks for watching.